Nateum, in respect to uh, being the older brother of Loak, it's almost like the Cain and Abel sort of like uh, dissonance there of trying to seek approval of a father figure. I think Nateum is very in tune to the culture that he's been brought up in, and he sees his, he knows his dad is alien to it, and he's more at home in it than his father is, um, and and therefore has his feet firmly on the ground, whereas Loak almost like, see, uh, in as a difference, like sees this other world that his father's experienced and like takes a bit more joy out of like that unknown. But um, Natame's trying to be the hero of the story and given the world that we're in, uh, he finds it impossible to do so, but also that's a classic trope of the coming of age story, which is amazing to see in this world and um, I think the audience will find it extremely refreshing to see characters sort of like try to come of age within this environment. When the Sullys get to Metcaina, it really shows the uh, cultural abundance of the world of Pandora. Everyone, the idiosyncrasies of the terrain um, really expose how then these different tribes have developed a way of life. They live by the water, the Sullys don't need to hold their breath underwater, they don't they they live in the forest, their deity is a tree. Uh, they they are from a different way of life completely. So there is a lack of acceptance only through the lack of understanding of each other. And of course um, Jake is infamous uh, in the world of Pandora. His his story is known um, and to the leaders of the Metcaina that uh, is a very controversial topic because they think the same dangers that he attracts will attract them to their front doorstep. Acting underwater was sort of second nature given that we trained breath holds uh, for a lot longer than we ever needed to film on. It was a, it was a very, very good tactically because we would only ever do a scene like max three minutes underwater uh, and we would breathe up on a higher concentration of O2 O2, which obviously helps you hold your breath a lot longer, and that was a, a godsend because that was uh, made the whole process a lot easier. And you're sort of lulled into a very meditative, uh, peaceful state, and um, it actually made the filming of the scenes uh, bleed into the into the uh, preparation for the scene. You would uh, have to spend, obviously, if you're holding your breath for three minutes, you'd have to do a breathe up for a longer time than that, and it would be a Every, all, the whole set was really focused and really together when we were filming underwater because everyone respected what a commitment it was to be able to pull off such a task. So it was actually very cohesive and you could feel the crew and some of the cameramen had to go underwater as well and also do a breath hold. So it was a very like, communicative effort when we were filming in a tank.